whistle has been blown on historic corruption at the Firearm Licensing Authority in Jamaica by none other than the current CEO. Shane Darling says miscreants and convicted criminals have taken advantage of this corruption and are now legally bearing arms. He joins me today to talk about this extraordinarily troubling issue. Shane Darling, welcome to the conversation, sir. Thank you for having me. The first place to start is this. You took office in June 2017. That's correct. If, you, if we say we start at the start of the month, between then and now, 1,720 days. Why has it taken so long for you to tell the public this about a situation that has stretched across two boards of the FLA? Good. All right. I'd like to say that this is not the first time that I've said this to the public. But you've, you've never given these details before? I will admit I've never gone this far. But I did say it more than once. And if you check the records, I attended on the Parliament um, Internal and External um, Affairs Committee mm -hmm. sometime after the board resigned in August 2017. And I did state in that Parliament, and it was major news when I stated that criminals had received firearm licenses. And I said the process, based on my checks so far, started in or around 2014. Mm. And that I remember saying to the parliament that at the time it was a hundred and more and counting based on what I'd seen. Yes. So I did make it known to the country that this was the state of affair at yeah. the FLA. I'm, I'm not talking about you flying the kite. I'm talking about you giving the detail. Giving the details. They, they did at the press conference that a few is days correct. ago. And I, you've never done that before? No. Right. And I, and I say to you that I was motivated to do so because while fixing the problem, putting policies in place, bringing to the board's attention the individuals who have received the licenses, I came under attack. Mm. I came under cyber attack. Every single month since I've been at the FLA, there have been malicious rumors, innuendos, circulating all over social media, WhatsApp groups, YouTube channels, email ad emails being sent almost on a monthly basis, mm. s s saying all sort of manner of things about me, scurrilous things, mm. libelous things, mm -hmm. things that I would say to you would be hurtful to any individual. Yes. My family overseas saw it, friends as far as Australia. Yes. So I'd. And believe me, it demoralized me at times, right? And I waited and I had meetings with Mocha to discuss it. I spoke to the DPP. I spoke to the police. I wrote even to the Commissioner of Police. Yes. Complaining about these things and bringing them to their attention, yes. seeking their assistance. Yes. I went as far as to seek the assistance of the U.S. Embassy to assist me in it because in some of the emails it made mention that I was selling gun licenses and moving the money um, overseas yes. to the US yes. and using my diplomatic passport to travel with to, uh, in order not to be detected. Yes. And so those things really hurt me. And so I really sought help everywhere yes. that I could find in doing so. So this is a counterattack? This is an attack. On me. No, no, no. So, so you're, you're, you're coming now with more details than you've ever come forward with, with before. Is a counterattack by you against those who are looking to undermine? That is correct. My effort was to bring to the public's attention mm. the reason why these um, emails, WhatsApp messages, yes. were being circulated about me. I wanted the public to understand that it is the effort to clean up the system at the FLA yes. while I was under cyber attack. On the, on the point of, 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 the, of the claims that have been made against you, and as you say, the, the, the claims are extraordinarily troubling. And, and, and were, had I not known you in public life, I'd be wondering, what manner of man is this? And the public who've seen those emails, who don't have the proximity that some of us in the media have to you to know that, well, you are what you represent yourself to be, would be wondering, what kind of man is this? And I say this, Shane Darling, among the claims made against you is that this man has suddenly got rich since going to the FLA. He's bought a big house in a swanky part of Jamaica. He has these assets that he never had before, ever since he touched FLA. They're saying you 
and your and the chairman of the executive of the, the FNA board now, the Colonel Carter, you are there to eat a food. You are not there to clean up. This is a crusade. This is a red herring by you because you are the one getting rich. Well, I I will present the record to the public. I'm prepared to show my bank statements. I'm prepared to show my assets to the public. And I'll say this to you, that I'm also prepared to show that less persons have received farm licenses in 2017 since I got to the FLA yes. than ever before. I'd also like to show that most license, the, that the, 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 most re, the, the most revocation of yes. licenses has taken place from 2017 On your watch. to now. Let, let's get to, to some details here because <coughs> I, I, I wrote... A, <laughs> You, you know how this goes. You're an attorney, so you know how they're preparing notes. I, I wanted to ask you, tell, tell, tell my viewers, what does the law say about persons with criminal records applying for and receiving approval for gun licenses? Well, the Farm Act makes it um, clear that the decision to grant a person a license is within the discretion of the board. Ah. Now, it must be known to the public because that's uh, one of the misunderstandings circulating in the public space that I grant farm licenses. Yes. As a CEO, I do not sit on the board of the farm licensing authority. Yes. That means I don't participate in the decision as to who is granted a license, who is denied, and who is revoked. Mm. What I do, I'm an administrator, meaning I vet the files to ensure that all the security clearance are there. Yes. I ensure that through my investigation department, background checks are carried out yes. on individual. We receive uh, reports from the intelligence branch and the police and the international community on individuals. Yes. When we receive those reports, it is my duty to bring it to the attention of the board. Yes. The final decision, however, to grant, to deny it, to grant or to revoke, rest of the board. Do you have the power to tack on a note onto a particular application to say, send this one through? No. Have no. you ever done that? No, mm. never. Mm. Let me say to you what, as the CEO, I do. I bring to the board's attention whatever report. So, for example, if there's an adverse report on an individual, when the file is prepared, first and foremost, if an adverse report comes in, the investigator is required to call in the individual to give him an opportunity to respond to the allegations. Yes. So, for example, if there's an allegation against a George Davis that he's an abuser, yes. he was in, in domestic violence, we call in the individual and ask, have you ever been a part of this? Can you explain, with, without sometimes giving the, the full detail? Yes. Have you been in drug trafficking, if that is the report? Yes. And give the person the, the opportunity to respond to it. The person may deny it. Yes. The person may admit to it. And that statement is prepared with the file and in sending to the board, the CEO's office. Yes. Not necessarily the CEO himself. Yes. The CEO's office. And I take responsibility for what is written on the file. For sure. We highlight to the board that one, see adverse report at page 35. Yes. See investigator's comments. Yes. See applicant yes. comments at page at yes. that for your consideration. Yes. That is what is placed on it. So, so, so no application is turned down by you before it reaches the board? It can't be because I have no such because power. Because that's not the process. It, it's, it's not the process yes. and I have no such power. And I yes. tell you why it can't be and I have no such power. For an application to be approved, denied, or revoked, it requires three signatures yes. and three signatures of the board. Yes. None, none for yes. the CEO. Yes. True or false, a criminal record does not preclude me from getting a gun license. True. That by itself, you having a criminal record yes. and not having one does not give you one or deny I'm happy one. you went there too because I was going to ask if yes. having a spotless record, a clean police record means that I'm, in a, I'm more likely to get a gun license than somebody else. You're saying no. That is correct. And, I'm, and I want to clarify the yes. point to you. Say you are convicted of failing to file your statutory declaration. Yes. That's a, that's a, a record. Politicians have been known to Right. That. That's mm -hmm. a record. That does not preclude you from yes. getting a farm license. Say insurance, you're in, you're, in, you're in the insurance business and you're required to register with the FSC and you fail and you're convicted for yes. that. For that. You're, not, um, you're not precluded in those cases. But they're spending time in prison for assault. That, no, the Farm Act makes clear. Mm -hmm. Any person convicted of an offence of, for, for, um, for, um, involving violence, yes. for which three months or more yes. has been sentenced, firearm-related offence, drug offence, yes. right? Those are flagged as not person not being fit to yes. hold firearm licenses. 
says drug, guns, violence, unsound mind, yes. mind, intemperate habits. Yes. Those persons that should be deemed not fit to, yes. to hold firearm licenses. In other words, undesirables. Undesirables, mm -hmm. no. The board deliberates by itself. The five-member board deliberates by itself. Yes. And it makes a decision as to who is to be granted a license. Yes. Now, once the board grants a license, if you are aggrieved by their decision, because you are then advised of the board's decision, yes. and you are given a letter stating the grounds on which the board find that you are unfit to hold a license, yes. that's an administrative part of the work. So once the board writes on the file, yes. and the three signatures are there, so if I should receive a file with only two signatures, yes. I wouldn't process that. I'd bring it back to the board to say there's one missing yes. because it requires at least three. Yes. But whatever the decision of the board is, it is not for the CEO to interfere to say you should have denied him or you should have granted him. Yes. This administrative process now will take effect to say to the applicant, this is the decision of the board. Yes. You have been granted a yes. license. And we'll process the individual. If the person is denied, the person is given the option to appeal to the review board, which is a separate board from the board that denied him. Yes. That board is, is chaired by the former president of the Court of Appeal. The law makes it clear that the board of the FLA must consist of a retired um, judge of the Court of Appeal yeah. or Supreme Court, yes. a senior civil servant or retired de um, DPP, yes. a senior member of the JCF, G senior member of JCF, not below the rank of senior superintendent of police, yes. and any two other individual who the Minister of National Security deems fit. Deems fit. Mm -hmm. No. It is those three members, it is three of, any three of that five yes. membership that determines who get a license, right. not the CEO. Yes. So anybody out there who is saying the CEO is responsible yes. for persons getting gun license yes. are totally off. So just before we go to the break, let me get this straight. I was going to come to that. I'm happy you went there. Of the five members who make the decision at the level of the board, they make it by... Is it unanimous decision, um, majority, and then the, it is signed by any three, or well, clearly the three who support it? How, how does it work in real terms? Well, from my knowledge of it, because yes. I do not sit with yes. the board in decision yes. making, yes. but from my limited knowledge on how they deliberate, if persons agree, they all sign. So if four, three members are there, then they have a quorum and they meet. Yes. If five members are there, I suspect the five members sign. Right, but I'm, 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 but I'm saying, <laughs> if two of the five say no, based on what I'm seeing, I'm not comfortable granting this license, but three of the five say yes, then the majority carries. They proceed. They proceed. Good. There's Good. no what I call um, dissension on the, yes. on the file. There's yes. no, no objection in terms of there's no signing page yes. for the persons who don't agree. Yes, and you said something earlier I wanted to clarify. You yes. said that notwithstanding what the Act says, the granting of a firearm license, granting of an approval yes. for, for, for a license or a permit, yes. is the purview of the board. That is correct. So it is that notwithstanding what the law says, the board can go ahead and act outside of what the law dictates. The, the, is that what you're saying? The, the law sets out yes. those who, who should not. We talk about restricted persons, persons right. convicted of armed of yeah, offense, man. drugs, the undesirables, we, we went through them, right? They are no. They are no. Yeah. Under the law. Yeah. The firearm accepts out um, a list of them, I, I believe, in section 36, 6 it sets that out. So no man convicted of rape or a gun offense who should has a gun license now should have had that, that, license that license given to him. That is correct. Right, stay where you are. We take a break here on The Conversation. Back with more. I'm talking with the CEO of the FLA in Jamaica. with us on the conversation. We're talking about the whistleblowing, about corruption, historic corruption at the Firearm Licensing Authority. Usually these things are done by a political rival seeking to unsettle the party in power who of course appointed the board in session 
But this one is remarkable for the fact that the man leading the agency is himself drawing the attention of the public to what he says happened before his tenure and how his efforts at cleaning up the situation has caused him and his family to come under personal direct attack from miscreants using the cyberspace uh, to further their nefarious ends. Shane Darling is the CEO and he is with me. I wanted to ask, you made much of at the press conference you held recently about the number of, well, I wanted to say dodgy, but I think it is more correct to say questionable files mm -hmm. concerning persons who have been approved for uh, firearm permits, firearm licenses. And then you said, uh, you, you mentioned the Dennis Wright, Dennis Meadows uh, board from 2017 forward. Yes. And of course, you, you, you also talk, spoke about 2014. So I wanted to get it straight. Are you, the, the, the 200 questionable files that you have and that you made reference to, are these dating, those dating back from 2014 forward or from 2017 to this point? No. What I can say here mm -hmm. is that from 2014 to 2017, yes. because since 2017, yes. when the board resigned, yes. we have implemented measures, one, to ensure that there are no repeat of what took place from 2014 to 2017 could continue. That's the first thing I want to make clear. Yes. So it is in the public space and the impression is given that it is still happening today. Yes. Well, I'm telling you that we put measures in place to ensure that that does not take place. And I'll tell you what was taking place in more details. Yes. The board in 2014, led by Robert Gregory, and I want to state that the FLA started in 2006. Yes. Now, during that period leading up to 2014, thereabout, there seemed to have been a smooth running of the FLA. Mm -hmm. However, in 2014, there seemed to be a shift because what I saw taking place on the files were suspicious. Mm -hmm. So a George Davis applies. George Davis, the police reports, suggests is a criminal. Yes. The background check suggests that he's a criminal. Some lot of scamming. Yes. Right? He unexplained wealth. Yes. 20 odd year old boys owning massive properties in Montego Bay. Yes. In the West. And so that person is denied by the very board in 2014. Yes. But the said board in 2014 granted him a license in 2015. Yes. Although they denied him in 2014. Yes. There's no new application and yes. there's no appeal. Yes. So what a change. In fact, that file would have been stored in the registry yes. because the file is now considered closed. Yes. Then how did that file get back into the boardroom yes. for the board to now Approve grant that. Yes. a license to that person? Yes. One. Two, there are cases where the previous board, before the current one sitting, mm -hmm. takes up a file that was denied by that board and approved yes. without any new application, yes. any new appeal, yes. which the law provides for. Yes. That became suspicious for, 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 for me. It was so bad that even licenses that were revoked yes. by the authority because they deemed the person unfit. Yes. These persons were then being approved even without a new application. Yes. So it became, became a concern looking at everything. And then when I looked at the antecedent report, the conviction the criminal um, traces yes. from the authorities, and that it was not one, two, or three. It wasn't a slip through the crack. Yes. It seemed to have been an organized... Yeah, a, a glut a, of a them. Glut, yes. Yeah. So, so let me ask you then. So, so isn't it true, though, uh, Shane Darling, that where an application has been denied, that a board can grant the permit applied for without a new appeal, as you frame it, if it is that the person who is applying engages legal accounts to make representation on their behalf. In other words, work with me here. <coughs> I we, understand we, we know that the appeal process is or was very tedious. Go, is there, I'm giving the benefit of the doubt saying if you, you've improved that. So is or was very tedious. So rather than wait on the appeal process to go through, someone gets an attorney, the attorney lobbies the FLA board on, the, on their behalf, and then what became what was a denied application now becomes an approved application. Could that not have been the reason to explain some of these things that you've, decided, you, you've described as being dodgy, as being questionable? What I'll tell you in no uncertain terms, yes. that the firm does not support that. 
mm. and the, the Attorney General's opinion that we sought in 2017 yes. in, in terms of how to treat with these approvals yeah. gave the opinion that once the board makes a decision mm. to grant, deny, that is the end of the matter. But question for you. I hear that, you know, yes. and that's fine. But you, you notice what you said? Yes. The Attorney General said that to you in 2017 after you sought the opinion. Yes. But the problems you're talking about happened before. Yes. So I'm saying before, isn't it possible that the board could have, could, could have proceeded to give a license to somebody who was denied by virtue of representation from that person's attorney rather than going with what is written, especially given the express power yes. that you've said the board has, notwithstanding what the law says? And I'm saying to you the answer would be no. And I'll tell you why yes. I say no. Because one would have to explain, why is it that George Davis is allowed to bring his attorney to make representation before the board to mm. grant, the same board that denied him, yes. to grant him the license that was denied, yes. while other persons, like John Brown, yes. is going through the appeal process through the review board? Yes. Why is that? Because the appeal process through the review board is a separate process that goes to the minister and which the law requires. Yes. Why, is some, why are some persons going through that process yes. while others are lobbying this very said board to reverse their yes. decision? That tells you that something is awry there yes. in the process if that is allowed. Yes. And that is where all the shenanigans, yes. I believe, y took place. You mentioned the name, and I'm only mentioning the name because you mentioned it. Yes. You, you spoke of Secretary Alcock. Yes. Everybody knows him as Jack Cure. Right. And we all know Jack Cure's antecedents mm -hmm. and his bid in prison for rape and, 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 and assault. Right. And... Well, you know what? Let me, let me turn the question the other yes. way. To the best of your knowledge, yes. was a permit approved for the artist? It was. And it was. Let it me... was approved. Yes. Because my information from people who served the board was yes. that it wasn't. So notwithstanding what Ms. Yes. Darling said on Tuesday, Jack Cure was never given a permit. And I'm saying, but the gentleman told the media yes. that he was. Yes. So speak truth. Well, let me, let me give you. I'll give you dates. Yes. It is so curious that when Jack Cure, Jack Cure applied in 2014... His application was brought up to the board in 2016. In fact, the ten, on the 10th of June 2016, the board then denied Jack Yard's application for a farm license. Yes. On the basis, and it is stated on the face of the record, that he's not fit and proper person to hold a farm license. Yes. The investigator but did not recommend that he get it for the very reason of his previous convictions. Yes. The director of investigation says he should not get it based on his previous conviction. The board met and the board decided that he's not fit and proper to hold a license. Mm -hmm. That's the decision okay. on the board. Yeah. Three members signed. Yes. However, on September 21st, 2016, mere three months later, yes. the same board picked up Jack Ewer file and approved him for a license. So what would have changed? On the face of the file, nothing changed. Nothing. If, if you were, were the signatories on the denial the same, the signatories on the approval? My recollection, at least, uh, without having the benefit of the file, I believe at least two of the signatories mm. who denied also signed the approval. Without, without any visible new information? No, he knew. But what could, have been, what could have changed from him not being fit and proper in June, yes. to him being fit and proper in three months later. In, in three months later. Yeah. What could have been, been um, about him that would have occasioned you to change your mind about his fit and proper nature yes. three months later, where, where the conviction was not expunged, yes. so the appeal was not won? Yes. So what would have changed? Yes. And even if it was, why not allow the appeal process or a new application yes. to facilitate the changes? So here's that. Here's the here's yes. I, I, I checked that before, before, before you came here. Yes. What I was told was that Jacure, and you have to tell me if this is straight, yes. Jacure was given a provisional approval. So I said, oh, the FLA gives provisional approval. The person said yes. So I was told that Jacure was given provisional <clears> approval. <throat> Something happened and it was decided not to make the provisional approval formal approval. And then after a time when the infraction that caused the provisional approval to not be transformed into formal approval cleared up, they proceeded in upgrading the status from provisional approval to approval. So it wasn't a case of denial and then approval three months later. Well, let me say this to you, George. I can bring your station and any station mm. to the FLA today mm. To show you that's not true, mm. that there is nothing on my files 
at the FLA that had ever stated provisional approval. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the decisions are either approved, denied, deferred. That is what I've that seen. That category does not exist. No, provisional approval. I've never seen something marked provisional approval. Yes. Right? But on Jack your file, I can tell you there's no such thing marked provisional approval. Yes. Now, let me explain to you the process. Once a person is approved, approved for a license, the person must then find a trainer and to be trained, he's advised of the approval, he's given a list of trainers to select from who will train him to be competent in the use and management of the firearm. Yes. Once the trainer certifies that the person is ready, yes. the FLA conducts a competence examination. Yes. Once the individual passes that competence um, examination, the person is then given a purchase order to purchase the weapon. Yes. And once the person purchases the weapon, the dealer sends the information to the FLA that the person has purchased the weapon, and we input the data for the purchase of the weapon into our license manager system that generates now a license and the person is called in to take the photograph and we issue the license to the yes. individual. So there is no, so the only condition that exists is that the person must pass the test mm. of competence, mm -hmm. right? So if the person fails the test, he, he has another opportunity to pass. Yes. But there is no conditional approval, meaning yes. conditional on us getting some information later. Yes. No, yes. Yes. there's an approval Denial or yes. revocation, yes. deferral. Yes. But that's it. There's no conditional. Now, as I said, once the file is approved by the board, it then moves out of the boardroom to the administrative part where we now conduct the competence examination and issue the license, the actual card. Yes. When, based on how you explained your role in yes. all of this, yes. my words now, effectively what you do and your office does is effectively audit the work of your investigators and the other people down the chain to make sure that everything is in order, you send on to the board. That is correct. At the point when the Jacure application, um, that was before your time. That was before my Before time. your time. So, yes. so at the time when, at the point when that came, when that came yes. a CEO seeing flags being raised by the investigators and uh, the, the, the flat out denial yes. by, by one of the, the, the agents yes. at, the, at, the, at that level, would they have said to the board, oh, well, this one looks bad? or make any addendum to it, or you just send the raw data to the board for them to consider for themselves from scratch, even though it, is, it looks dodgy, it looks as if it won't go anywhere. Do you assist that process? Do you do anything to it? Are you empowered as CEO to do anything to it at that point? Well, I'll answer you this way. Based on the record on Jack your file, it was red flagged, as I said to you. Mm -hmm. The investigator yes. said, based on his record, we are not recommending mother fit person. Yes. The director, of investigation wrote the same thing on yes. the file that he's not recommended as a fit person to be granted a firearm license, right? Yes. That was submitted to the board yes. with the criminal record yes. of the individual attached to the file. And this for a man who the whole world knows was incarcerated. That is correct. Yes. And remember, as I stated before, the board having considered that denied him. Yes. On the basis of what the, the investigator said, he's not fit and proper, and they wrote it on yes. it that he's not fit and proper. Yes. So it, there's no question. However, I'll add something to you yes. today that I never said before. Yes. So you're hearing this for the first time. Go ahead. After it was approved by the, by the board, yes. it was the director of investigation who wrote a memo to say that this is vulgar. Oh? Yes. This is vulgar and this requires review. What? And that is how the board ended up revoking that, that license three months later in December. The approval of Jack I will release that to the press. Stay where we are. We have to take the break. We're coming right back. We're talking to the CEO of the FLA in Jamaica, Shane Darling. with us on the conversation. I'm talking with the CEO of the Firearm Licensing Authority in Jamaica, Shane Darling. He went to the press earlier this week and disclosed historic corruption at the authority. He says that his efforts to clean it up 
have caused him to come under sustained attack from those who would want him out so that they can continue to profit from the corrupt approval of gun licenses for miscreants and convicts, persons who ought not to have the right to bear arms. Shane Darling, the issue of Dennis Meadows is curious because, again, I mentioned his name only because you did yes. at your press conference. You also mentioned Dennis Wright, the man who was the chair of the board at the time. Can you explain to me the dynamic between, the working dynamic between the chairman of a board, not the review board, the FLA board, the chairman of the board and the CEO? Because I want to see if you parallels between yourself and, and Colonel Carter and how you work and how it appears that Dennis Wright and Dennis Meadows did their work when they were with the FLA. Okay. Well, the relationship between the CEO and the chairman of the board is simply one that the chairman is the CEO's boss. And the CEO reports to the board on a monthly basis as it relates to the administration aspect of the authority. Mm. Meaning, we're required to tell the board about the attrition of staff, we want the, the staffing arrangements, the processing of files, meaning how many files are at the investigation level, mm. how many new files came in for the month, how many were denied, how many revoked. So we are giving them a rundown of the entire operation. What is the waiting time period in the customer service era? What is the waiting time period for new application? What is the waiting time period for renewal? So that report is presented to the board on a monthly basis to give the board an idea of the administration yes. of the authority, yes. right? As it relates to licenses and so forth, the CEO and the administration has nothing to do with the final decision of the board. And I make it clear again yes. that while the administration carries out the investigation, process applications, it cannot determine who gets a license and who don't. So where, like, where, where, where approvals are concerned, you're saying the CEO and the chairman of the board are mutually exclusive events. That is absolutely correct. From the moment the file goes through, the CEO has nothing more to do or say about anything in that file to influence a decision either way. That is correct. Although I can tell you, yes, the public believes, as they would, I know, I would accept and forgive the public for believing, yes. that the chief executive officer of any entity is so powerful yes. that you have power to do anything. Yes. So if you ask the public now, they may believe that I approve and deny license. I remember a friend of mine cursing me that they didn't get a license yes. and I am at the FLA and I said, but I can't help you. Yes. I yeah. have no way to help you. You're you his friend, you should have free mom. You, yes, you could be my best friend. Yes. I could not assist you because at the end of the day, no matter what is on the file, it is the board that makes that final decision. And George, let me tell you something. I don't know the decisions that the board makes, meaning once the board has made a decision for the day yes. and leave, they leave the files that are approved or denied, whatever decisions they have made on the files, yes. out. And my administrative team goes into the boardroom, takes up the file, and they input the decision of the board. Yes. And they send the files down to the application yes. unit to process. So it's purely data entry data from Data entry from me. So CEO himself don't necessarily see the yes. files. If the administrative team should see what you'd consider to be an odd situation, where, for example, maybe two members sign, yes. then they'd bring it to my attention. Yes. If they should see a situation where you applied for a pistol and you approved for a shotgun, they'd say, sir, something is wrong with this. Yes. And I'd take it back to the board to clarify that position. But other from, otherwise from that, yes. it, it, is, it is a run of the mill in terms of the processing. You, you were brave at your press conference on, on, on Tuesday, um, Shane Darling. Some would, say, some would say foolhardy. You would say brave, I'm, I'm certain. You've described a relationship between a CEO and a board chairman that perhaps fits in with the narrative of how CEOs and chairmen work. But let me ask you this. Based on what you said on Tuesday, again, that's the reference point. Is the public to believe that Dennis Wright, the former chairman of the FLA, former JLP candidate in eastern Portland, and Dennis Meadows, former JLP candidate in northern Trelawney, and former member of the board of the FLA, that Dennis Wright as chairman was puppet master, was puppet rather, and Dennis Meadows was puppet master. Is that what the country is to believe based on what you said happened when they had their hand on the wheel? When you say puppet master, puppet master meaning, to who or meaning, what? Meaning, 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 Dennis Wright, 
the decisions he made was influenced by what the outcome is that Dennis Meadows desired based on how their arguments were framed and based on the fact the prominence of Dennis Meadows in the conversations that you've had and based also on the criticism of you that Dennis Meadows has made in the public space and based on how Dennis Wright seemed to have been acquiescent to what Dennis Meadows wanted to have done at the level of the board from what you've said at your press conference. That is why I'm asking the question about Geppetto and Pinocchio, Puppet Master and Puppet, between the two Dennises, Wright and Meadows, in their time on the FLA board. Well, what I'll say this to you is that I make no, no um, comment as it relates to the relationship and wor our working relationship between the both persons. What I will tell you is that the files that have been flagged by the administration, the signature on almost all of those files belongs to Dennis Meadows. He's a common denominator mm. on the files. So he signed more than the chairman did? That I can absolutely tell you yes. Because the records that I've seen, you'd, one, one would ask, where was the chairman? Yes. But I can tell you, the chairman's signature didn't appear. And I could safely say, I would not say 100%, because I'm, you'd have to see everything to yes. say 100%. And well, the overwhelming majority, the chairman's signature does not appear anywhere. I can tell you that. In fact, a part of fixing the issues going forward from 2017, Major General Anderson, Anthony Anderson, yes. who is now the Commissioner of Police, yes. because he became the chairman right after um, Dennis Wright Board yes. resigned, implemented a measure that the chairman of the board should sign, notwithstanding three signatures are required, yes. in terms of probity and accountability, yes. and the book stops with the chairman, yes. the chairman should see the, uh, the, the files and sign before they are processed by the administrative team. That has been followed to, by, the, um, by the, um, the current chairman, yes. Colonel Carter. Yes. When it comes to denial, the chairman says he will for he, he may forego those, but for yes. approval, yes. he would like to, yes. to see that. And the reason is clear yes. as to why one so, would so, want so to. So the question then, Shane, darling, if it is that Dennis Meadows' signature is on the overwhelming, not even majority, majority mm -hmm. is 50%, overwhelming. 51%, but yes. overwhelming majority of the, what, what I'm calling the dodgy files, the questionable yes. files, then the 200 questionable files, why is it that MOCA, which has taken a look, has said nothing to the man? And other entities, other arms of government, other organs which have looked, have said nothing to the man about what he did in approving files that you are now telling the country are dodgy. Good. Let me tell you this. Mocha has all the files that I'm speaking about. The, for what we know now as the Integrity Commission was then Contractor General, yes. Dirk Harrison, yes. did interview Mr. Meadows, mm -hmm. on these matters. What I can say to you, that under the current Farm Act, giving a criminal a license is not an offense for which penalty is attached. Where the law says that these persons should not be given mm. a license, mm. the law makes no comment further mm. as to the sanction mm that should um, be occasion yeah. if it should happen. Yeah. This is where we are. But, 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 but you and I know, you and I know very well, going back to the time of Greg Christie, who was a contracted general of a different kind to what we had had before, yes. that it wasn't only in cases where criminal prosecution was to be laid that a contracted general would flag the conduct of a public official in office discharging of duties of a public official. Yes. Many times, and I, 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 I've lost count of the number of them I did when I was in the newsroom in, at, in radio, writing that the conduct of the official is highly irregular, his favorite, two, his favorite phrase, highly irregular. Uh, this raises concerns, so on, so on, so on. So I'm saying, and I'm happy you threw in the fact that the, the Dirk Harrison-led office of the Contractor General interviewed Dennis Meadows. Why is it that no missive like that, no, com no piece of communication like that has been given to the public or the parliament, the parliament first, of course, about the gentleman's conduct, notwithstanding the fact that there's nothing to hold him criminally um, liable? 
Why is it that not even an admonishment has been issued about his role in so-called dodgy files? It's a very important question. Very, I agree with you. It's very, very important. But I'll tell you this. That question would have to be placed at the feet of what is now the Integrity Commission as well as, as MOCA. Because one would ask what has been the outcome of the investigation and the hundreds of files that the FLA has handed over. So, to, to, so, you, to, so to you say that to say that it's not as if any investigation is closed? That, that I, I can't speak to that because the, it, I can tell you that yeah. an investigation was started. Yes. And I can tell you that documents were requested by both entities and that the documents requested were handed over. Yeah, but, but, but you see, but, but, but Mr. Darling, that don't, is, don't, don't, defend, don't, don't be defensive on that one because we're, we're saying the same thing. No, because no. You're, you said, you said, yes. I said to you, if you, based on what you know, can say that it, the investigation was not closed, and you said, well, what you can say is that it was opened, but it hasn't been closed because we haven't heard that it has been disposed of. Well, so it's to, safe to assume yes. that it's still ongoing. Precisely. Right. And, 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 no, and I'll say this to you. It is for me to assume that maybe the investigation has reached a stalemate. And I say this to mm. you why I say that. Mm. Because I've not had any more requests. And this is from 2000. This is almost going five years. Yes. There have been no more requests for files or information. Right? I have been interviewed. Yes. Right? By MOCA. And I've been interviewed by um, the then Contractor General's Office. Yes. Because one must remember one thing. That I never... That the board led by... Um, Dennis Wright, yes. on which Mr. Miller sat. I never spent more than two months with that board at yes. the SLA. Yes. So I joined in on June 1, yes. and the board resigned August 2. Yes. So that's about two months yeah. full in terms of operation. And therefore, whatever information would have happened from 2014 to 17, yes. I would have had no interaction with those yes. matters. Yes. I was fine to those matters. Yes matters. If there's anything to implicate me, yes. the CEO, it would have to be from 2017 to, to now. Yeah. And I'm prepared to tell you that I am prepared and open for any investigation, George, on the, the administration since then. And you sit a polygraph test? Yes, George. And I'll tell you this without, yes. without fear of contradiction. Yes. I have had a hard time holding the FLA together. Yes. Because, George, I inherited, as I stated before, a cesspool mm -hmm. where people believed that recommending criminals, collecting monies based on my information, and I got many information mm -hmm. from, per, from the public yes. about what is taking place, mm -hmm. that, George, the entire Mandeville location is now staffed by new persons. Mm -hmm. So in terms of the transition in cleaning mm -hmm. yes. ship, the, new, the investigation department, I don't believe one, the one investigator who was there in 2017 is there now. Yes. And so too is the compliance unit. Yes. So there's a total changing out of the team that yes. existed before as a part of my efforts. But, but, but Mr. Darling, here's the problem I have with, with some of this. I know a part of Meadows' antecedents. And I know a part of your antecedents. And I know enough to know that there were times when both of you were supportive of the same cause. I'll put it no stronger than yes. that. It seems to be that the personal animus between both of you is a part of this. And, and I'd, I'd like to know if you can tell the public what went wrong in that personal relationship that bled into the professional relationship that has caused both of you to be going at each other like this. Well, let me, let me just make it clear, clear that... I did not know Mr. Meadows in terms of knowing personally, in terms of somebody that I would pick up the phone and call. Yes. I know of him. Yes. Right? And I know, I remember the first time he called to me somewhere. I inquired. Who's his man? And he said, Meadows. And I said, oh, oh you're right. Dennis Meadows. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah. I, we don't have a relationship. But what I'll tell you that I understand Mr. Meadows' beef with me. Yes. Mr. Meadows believed that I leaked a controversial file to the media, yes. which caused the, that boy that he sat on to yes. resign. Yes. He has made it clear. Yes. I, I have postings from his, from his social yes. media page lamenting that. Yes. 
And I believe that is the beef that Mr. Meadows had. And I'm happy you went there because is there no truth to the fact that that file that you referenced, yes. that a part of that file was found in a secure drawer in your office? Oh, yes. I'll admit it was found in a secure drawer in my office. And Locked there you by why. you? Huh? Locked there by you? Yes. Yes. But I'll tell you why. Mm. The police, I got to FLA in June 1, 2017. I got a letter from a, from a senior, I, from the high command of the police for, force. Right? I think, the dep I think it was a deputy commissioner of police who wrote to me. And I touched on that letter, a letter from a senior superintendent in the West. Three pages advising me of the nefarious activities of a particular gentleman that mm -hmm. is believed to be in lot of scamming, murder. Mm -hmm. And who had a license I am. And recommending the revocation of that license. Mm -hmm. I was taken aback. I was shocked. This was my first month on the job. Yes. I didn't, I didn't know the name. I didn't know where to find the bathrooms yes. <laughs> in, in, in the FLA. So I was shocked. I requested the file to see the file. Because what I had is a letter, name, and information. Yes. So I requested the file. And when I reviewed the file, I said, my God, but this man, how do, could this man get a good farm license? Mm. And my recollection of it is that the traces were known before. Mm -hmm in terms of the police reports on yes. him. So I held the file and I contacted the chairman mm. and I told the chairman I'd like to meet with him. The chairman told me that he'd meet with me sometime in the week and he did meet with me sometime in the week. And I kept the file to meet with the chairman. Mm. So there was no missing or nothing mm. curious about yeah. my having the but file. But that file is what caused the relationship to break down between yourself and Meadows, you believe? Well, I, yes, and I tell you why I say that that is the one you're referring to. Because sooner after the, the chairman and I met, yes. he, maybe before or, or just thereabout, yes. the information that was sent to me by the police yes. was now circulating in, in the public media. space. Here on that. We have to take the break. Come back with the final segment here with the CEO of the FLA, Shane Daly. on the conversation my last few minutes with the CEO of the FLA in Jamaica, Shane Dalling, the Firearm Licensing Authority, in the news because of revelations about historic corruption at the government entity. Shane Dalling, the issue of your, well, the wisdom and the timing around now. My first question was why after 1,720 days you had come forth with so much detail when admittedly in before you had spoken to parliament, you had spoken on radio interviews and mentioned things but never in this depth before. I, I, may, I reference all that to ask. The threat of perhaps litigation against yourself, the FLA, is I think real. You're a lawyer, you understand these things better than I do. But don't you think it would have been better perhaps but let him better, more prudent, to give the passage of the firearm, amended firearm bill in Parliament sometime, which offers a kind of indemnity against prosecution, perhaps in your capacity as CEO, to allow you the cushion of doing this thing without fear of anybody filing any suit against you. Uh, you did you think of waiting until that time, or did you think that the immediacy of the situation demanded that you go and let the chips fall where they may? The immediacy of the situation required that I advise the public, and I'll tell you why. For the last two weeks prior to the press conference, the FLA has faced a barrage of bad press, mm -hmm. meaning everything that was coming out was negative. From the death of a Chinese national, yes. who, was, who, who it was said FLA denied a license, yes. that was never the case because the person never applied for a license. Yes to the, country, the Auditor General recommending surcharge for the CEO, you know, to other sev writings. Almost every day, there was something bad in the paper about the FLA. And at the same time, there were these issues circulating on social media mm -hmm. about the CEO, the reputation, corruption. Yes. Yes. And I said, this has to be addressed. The public has an interest in knowing where and how 
all of this is coming from, mm. right? And I think now, having gone to Parliament and spoken to the internal and external affair committee, invited yes. them to come and look at the issues that we had at the FLA. Yes. No one came, fixing the issues and being under attack. Yes. Reaching out to the DPP, reaching out to MOCA, reaching out to almost everywhere I could mm. to get attention in order for this to stop the yes. personal attack on me and my reputation, my character. Yes. I was very mindful of any possible lawsuit that could come. But remember one thing, the truth yes. shall be an absolute defense yes. to any claim of defamation. Yes. And therefore, I believe in telling the public what was happening, they would understand yes. why the attacks were as they were against myself mm -hmm. and the FLA. Was your staff at any level or even collectively demoralized by what you say is the campaign against you and the regular bad press that you say you've been getting? I will tell you this, George, that I can show you messages that I get from my team almost every day begging me to be strong and also saying to me that they don't know how I put up with this because they would have resigned and left it alone. Mm -hmm. Right? And so why don't you resign and leave it alone? Because evil prevail when good men sit and do nothing. Mm. And that is why I'm still there, George. Mm. To do nothing is not a solution. It's to attack the problem and to fix it. Mm. I live in Jamaica mm. and I have no intention of leaving Jamaica. Mm -hmm. And I believe that giving criminal guns pose the greatest risk to national security. And mm. if I want to protect the national security, I must be prepared mm -hmm. to sit down there and try to do something rather than leave it to George Davis or anyone else yes. to come and fix the problem. When I look at the constitution of the FLA's board, uh, all right, I'm just going to go to 2010. Just, um, yes. So that's what, 12 years ago now? That's a yes. long time, yeah. Since 2010, one of the names that stood out for me was the former senior puny judge, Justice Marva McIntosh. Yes who's been an ever-present member of the board from that time forward. Yeah. And I said to myself, well, how does a woman of her experience, her professionalism, her reputation, reconcile with being part of a board that is reported to have approved licenses for dodgy characters? I don't know if you can help me with that, but I'd appreciate it if you could. And George, I'll say this to you. That's a question, I believe, properly for mm. the retired justice. Yeah. But, 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 but here's the thing, though. The reason I went there is because I'm looking at those who have been damaged by this all. And the damage to you is that anybody who is on social media, who sees the things that have been said about you and knows that you've come under attack, as you've said, it's not something that you're making up. But I'm looking at the other people who have been associated with people that you assert appear to not have been up to any good and not doing the job as they were sworn to do by the Governor General upon appointment? Well, George, I will say that that, that is above my pay mm. grade. I report to a, that board. Yes. I can't question them or mm. their, 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 their integrity in mm. and of itself. What I can say is that as the administrative head of the entity, I owe a duty if I see something wrong, mm. to say something, mm. right? Remember, George, it is hard to report your boss. I have seen just before coming here the implication of what I have done in announcing what happened at the FLA from 2014 yes. to present. So I've gone beyond administration. Yes. I'm not targeting any particular administration. Yes. I've, I've spoken about an activity mm. that spanned between two administrations. And today, while coming here, on the news I heard, the People's National Party asking that I, Shane Darling, the CEO, be removed immediately from the FLA. Yes. Right? But this Shane Darling does not approve gun licenses. Yes. What Shane Darling did was to tell the public what was happening. Yes. And that is the consequence of my action. Yes. And that is why I would say to any senior public servant in a position like mine to remain silent. Yes. Because the implication is that the blowback is for you. Yes not for what is taking place. Yes. So if I leave the FLA tomorrow and George goes, Davis goes there, it will not prevent one firearm license being granted or yes. denied or revoked. Yes. Because I don't. Yes. The CEO doesn't. Yes. So what is the value of Shane Darling's resignation? What has he done? Mm -hmm. 
because he has come out to explain this. George, notwithstanding my detecting even miscreants, criminals getting gun licenses, yes. I can't revoke one. Yes. If the board decides not to revoke it, yes. there's nothing I can do to revoke that And license. crucially, the chain of events that you've red flagged, the, the chain started under the... The very administration who's calling the, the PNP to, administration. to resign. Yes. Right? So there's no fix to recommend a system to fix it. The resignation or removal of the CEO by yes. himself is not the fix. Yeah. The fix, George, is ironclad provisions in the legislation that makes it clear that no one convicted of a firearm-related offence should be granted a licence. Yeah. No convicted drug dealer should get a firearm licence. Yes. Right? And make it a sanction on any board that grants it and yes. make it a sanction on any administrative staff who aid a bed council anyone yes. to pay. I will tell you this, George. I was integral in the crafting of the firearm act as it relates to FLA provision. Yes. And the members of that committee will tell you that my recommendations were the strongest. Yes. I believe the board members should have been sent to prison for 15 years or more mm. if it is found that the provisions of the Farm Act were, were revoked. I recommended that staff members be criminalized. Yes. Like, in fact, George, I, I will go further and tell you this. It was my recommendation that anyone convicted of a firearm related offence should be barred for life mm -hmm. from owning a firearm. Yes. The stories that we hear are troubling and the allegations against you, as I said at the top, you've collected money for approving licenses, the existence of Caymani and bank accounts in the offshore tax haven, all of these things. You sit in front of me here today, you said earlier that you'd be willing to undertake a polygraph test to prove that what you say is actually That's what correct. is so. Where that is concerned, the uh, the, 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 the accrual of assets, uh, the, the, your, your personal finances, everything else. Can you sit and look me in the eye and tell me that not a dollar was earned illegally? I will tell you, George Davis, this. That one, I'm an attorney at law. I have an have a operation account. I have my personal account, which I receive my salary. And I will tell you this that the purchase of any asset that I have can be traced. The property I purchased in Upper St. Andrew was done from my savings and a bank loan. Yes. The Integrity Commission questioned me on the whereabouts of the, the funds, where the funds came from to make the deposit on my house mm -hmm. and where the rest came from. I provided the bank loan documents approved, and I will say it right here, through NCB. Mm -hmm. The deposit money that came through my account, and I traced it for them, meaning I showed them where I pulled money from various accounts mm -hmm. to put together, mm -hmm. and I gave them the dates, and also printed the transaction to show them that the money came out on that particular date, yes. date to come to the payment of the deposit yes. that I did. So every red cent paid for that home was handled by the bank. So even the deposit, the bank took the money from my account to pay over the deposit. So no cash was pa no cash passed and mm -hmm. and the accounts were there to show mm -hmm. any deposit, any monies coming in mm -hmm. to acquire the home that I had. Yes. Right? And I had substantially most of that money that I used to pay the deposit on the home before I went to FLA. Yes. Your you report to the board, the board reports to the minister. Yes. Can you sit here and say also that the Minister of National Security, Dr. Horace Chang, the Chairman of Cabinet, Andrew Michael Holness, the government, do you have their confidence today in how you're leading the FLA and with your move to highlight the historic corruption at the entity? I will say this to you, and I will stand corrected based on contradiction. But as I sit here today at this minute, I will say yes. I have the support of the Prime Minister, the Minister of National Security, and the Chairman of the Board. Mm -hmm. The Prime Minister himself spoke to me, the Minister of National Security spoke to me, and the Chairman I just met with before coming mm -hmm. here. And they have not only supported me, but encouraged the measures that have been put in mm -hmm. place, and have given support to those mm -hmm. measures. The Prime Minister was deliberate 
in ensuring that a man of, of Major General Anthony Anderson's character mm -hmm. was placed as chairman of the board of the FLA. Yes. And also to ensure that on Commissioner um, Anderson leaving, that a former colonel of the army in Colonel Carter yes. came to lead the board of the FLA. And the Minister of National Security has given us his full support in measures that are implemented and the actions being taken to ensure that we clean up the operation of the FLA. I can tell you that without co contradiction. Lastly, I, I know how wives can be, um, and children as well. The toll that all of this, the, 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 I'm sure your wife has said to you, they gave Jesus a cross to carry. You have made a cross for yourself and are walking around with it. Is she convinced that you should remain? Has she been telling you, just go into your love, get your, get your practice, take your practice to a next level, forget about all this? What is she saying? I will tell you, George, that it has affected, affected us greatly. And I tell you, me more than anything else in terms of the... I mean, I don't know if anyone in this country has ever endured cyber attack for four and a half years, yes. like I have. And, and it has been very hurtful. I'll make no, no apologies, George, and I'm not afraid and I'm ashamed to tell the public that I've been gravely affected mm -hmm. and distressed by it. But George, let me tell you something, as I said before. Evil prevail when good men sit and do nothing. And that is the strength on which why I remain at the FLA in fighting that cause, mm -hmm. George. Because if not me, who? Yeah. And that is what keeps me there, George. But there are days, I can tell you, George, that I stayed home because it was hard mm -hmm. for me to go because I am tired of the constant attacks. Mm -hmm. George, I went as far as securing. When I found that the law enforcement um, entities here could not assist me, they did recommend, however, that I may take a civil approach. Yes. And the Minister of National Security, Dr. Chan, gave me his blessing in going overseas to re uh, retain an attorney to go to the court in California, which is the headquarters of Google, Yahoo, yes. and Microsoft, and to secure a court order from the court, asking them to release. Now, George, remember, the, the courts in the U.S. are very liberal yes. in terms of what you call um, free speech. Yes. So they believe persons are free yes. to speak and to say anything about you. Yes. And so that was the challenge that we had in going before the court and getting the order. Because it would be a breach of privacy yes. to know, go behind who the, um, the persons were who had these emails. Yes. So it was a challenge. We went to court, however. We brought all the emails that were sent up to that date. And I outlined to the court the issue, my finances, how much it was hurting me, how much they were dishonest lies as I could not be approving on licenses yes. because I'm not on the board. Yes. And therefore, these were not fair comments. Yes. These were deliberate attempts to malign me. Yeah. And also, to show to the court that the emails changed, the addresses of all the emails changed each time. Yes. And that it was constant and yes. it was almost talking. Yes. The court having considered the matter granted the order for Google, Yahoo, and Microsoft to release the data on all the persons who were sending these emails. Yes. Right? Yes. And it was hard for me, George, because I became demoralized yes. for years, yes. feeling that I could not get anywhere. Mm -hmm. What became more demoralizing is when Yahoo, Google, and Microsoft said to us, whoever is doing this as cyber knowledge mm -hmm. and will not stop. Why? Mm -hmm. Each time they opened an account and the nasty emails are sent, they immediately delete the profile mm -hmm. from the platform mm -hmm. to disguise yeah. the source. But how we were able to capture data, they were able to find IP addresses. Yes. Because what they did, they bounced the, uh, the, the emails through foreign countries, Zimbabwe, yeah. Yeah, Australia, yeah, yeah. all over, New Zealand. Mm -hmm. So we got those IP addresses. Right? We got some in New York, some far places in New York, countryside. Yes. But what they didn't know, they didn't know that we had a court order in yeah. hand. Yeah. So when they sent the other email, we had the court order. And so we were able to serve the order instantaneously. Yes. So by the time they deleted it, yes. a fragment of it was still in the system. Yeah. So we were able to capture some data from that last yes. email. 
email. So we are following a trail yes. at the moment. Shane, darling, it's been tough. Uh, uh, I want to encourage you as a public servant, as a, as, a, as a citizen of this country, to continue the fight. It isn't easy. Many men would have folded and gone. We're happy that you are fighting it out. I want to wish you all the best. Thank you very much. Good, good, good. Appreciate That's the conversation for today, folks. Stay tuned, and we'll be back next week.